the SAS video tutorial where we're going to work with large data in SQL using PROC SQL. Okay, out on the repository, there's a large file called flight2000a.csv. It all the flight data from 2008, I believe, in the United States. Uh, it might be even farther. I didn't look close enough to see what it is, but it's a lot of records. Okay, so I've actually read this in. I put it in a library named flight. So I have live name, flight, this is where it is. This is the folder that I'm gonna use. Uh, you can run this right now. So it sets the library. Then I'm gonna go to Explorer. I'm gonna come over here. I'm gonna go to the one that says flight. And in here is my data set, flight 2008. Now, when you read this in, you might get some errors because SAS gets a little bit confused with the NAs in here. So if you come over here, you'll see these NAs. Uh, it'll tell you that there are errors when it imported it and it was unsuccessful. Uh, but don't worry about that right now. It's actually okay, because we're gonna be looking at some of the other data that's in here. Now, one of the things that you'll notice is there's lots and lots of data, okay? So we have departure time, we have arrival time. Uh, we have the carrier, we have the tail number of the plane, the flight number, the actual, uh, elapsed time and the CRS elapsed time, air time, delay. Uh, we have the origin, we have the destination, and these are your codes that you would use um, in terms of if you were looking for like airplane tickets. So IAD is Dulles Airport. TPA, I don't know. BWI is Boston Washington uh, International Airport. JAX is Jacksonville. End is Indiana, uh, Indianapolis. I think MCO is uh, Orlando. Uh, but anyway, they're all on here and we can look and see how long or what types of flights are delayed. And we can start pulling around and messing with this large data set. Uh, so let's try to do this real quick. The first thing we want to do is get some basic information. And I'm going to come over here to properties and you'll see that this data set has over 7 million rows of data. So there's information for 7 million flights. Uh, which is an awful lot of flights to have to sort through. So we're going to play with this here real quick in PROC SQL. So, of course, we're going to use PROC SQL, so we're going to start it with PROC SQL. And then we're going to put quit on the end because that's how we end these things. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is, since these are going to be rather large, I don't actually want to output them to a, a console anywhere. I probably want to put them in a table, uh, at least for the moment. So let's do the first thing, uh, create, and I'm going to call this uh, table flight and RIC1, uh, and this should be create table. And it's going to put it in my flight directory. It's going to call it RIC1. RIC is the Richmond International Airport, which Virginia Commonwealth University is located in Richmond, Virginia. Uh, so we're going to select. And here we want to select various very important things uh, that are related to Richmond in particular. So let's go back into our data set and see what we would really care about. So why don't we pull out of here the day of the week. So we'll use, uh, the year is always 2008. We're gonna pull day of the week. So day of week, make sure that that is correct. Day of week. Then we want to pull the uh, information on delays, is what I would like to know, is the uh, either departure delay or derival delay. So let's pull both of these, arrival delay and departure delay. So we come back over to our, our code here. We're going to do arrival delay and departure delay. Uh, now, we have to be a little bit careful here because we actually need to aggregate these, uh, the departure delay and the arrival delay. And the reason we need to aggregate them is these are individual records. And if we're going to look at the day of the week, we want to see which days of the week have uh, more delays. And we'll look at that first, and then we'll put more and more information in here. So what I'm going to do for this is I'm just going to take the mean and get the mean and standard deviation of each of these. So uh, I'm going to get the mean of this. I'm going to get the mean arrival delay. And I'm also going to get the uh, standard deviation of the arrival delay. And so I'm going to call this uh, as mean are 
delay. And uh, I'm gonna copy and paste this here because I wanna get the standard deviation as well. So come over here. Uh, I'm programming this in a vertical manner so make it a little bit easier to read. So here STD is the standard deviation and I'm gonna call this uh, STDEV, arrival delay, put a comma. Then I'm gonna get the mean departure delay. So here put mean departure delay and then we're gonna put as uh, mean depth delay. And then I'm gonna copy and paste this again. And here I'm gonna change it to standard deviation. So STD and STDEV, STDEV. And if you notice above, I spelled it wrong because I can't type well. So if you've typed that wrong, go back and fix it now. Um, okay, so I've got this and then I wanna take this from, again, I can't spell, uh, flight is my directory and then I have dot flight 2008. That's what I named my file uh, or my, yeah, the file that has the date in it. But here I wanna do something where something specific. I'm really interested in the origin, okay? So the origin I want to be from uh, Richmond, okay? So where, and now I have to come back here and look again, make sure I get this right, origin equals RIC, origin equals RIC. And I'm gonna have to put this in capitals uh, or in quotes because there's that. And then I'm gonna do group by, uh, day of week, because that's the only thing that I'm not aggregating on. And this should create a table for me that has all of this information. And if it doesn't, we will look in the uh, console or the log and see what exactly happened. So let's give this a go. It's running. Notice it has to go through 7 million records, so don't expect it to be fast. Okay, so it did create something here. I'm going to go over here to log. Um, let's see, it says table created, seven rows and five columns. Well, there's seven days of the week and we picked five different things, so that should be about right. And we aggregated everything up quite high. So we should be good with this. So if I look here, I can say the day of the week and I can look to see how much they differ. So the mean delay is on, I guess one is Sunday, would be 10 minutes. Uh, Tuesday, eight minutes, Wednesday, seven minutes. Uh, but look here on Thursday, whew, 14 minutes. Uh, so is that Thursday? Yeah, Thursday, 14 minutes. Friday, eight minutes. Saturday, 11 minutes. So it looks like uh, the best day to fly on if you're looking not to be delayed uh, on arrival. So you're flying in would be on a Tuesday. If you're just well, now this isn't a statistical comment. This is just looks like which one's the lowest. Uh, also on departures, departures seem to be the lowest on the third day of the week as well. So uh, if we look across here, we're more likely to be delayed uh, from on departure, uh, not on Tuesday. The worst day of the week would probably be Saturday. And uh, if, oh, actually, no, Thursday again. Uh, and notice there's a lot of standard deviation associated with this. So this d data is very variable and it's kind of fun to work with. Okay, so now let's suppose we want to get a, just a little bit more information out of this. Okay, so we have this simple query that requires us to create a table. We're pulling this information where we're getting the origin equals uh, RIC and we're grouping by day of the week. We can also not drill down so far, we can actually pull out by carrier as well. So here is unique carrier. Uh, notice we have WN and so on. Uh, and, or we could do it by destination. So we could do origin and destination because if we had that, that would tell us which destinations are worse. So why don't we actually do that? Let's add in uh, here our destination uh, as well. So I'm gonna put in here day of the week, destination. Is that how it was spelled or was it just dest? Yep, just dest. So I'm just put here a dest, comma. Well, now I have to add it down here. Dest, and then I'll call this two so I can see the difference. I'm trying to get you to see what we mean by aggregating up 
Uh, so here, if I run this, I'm gonna get this. And um, if you notice, uh, there's lots of information here. Uh, there's not much for DCA. So our destination is DCA, but we have a whole lot more information uh, on this because uh, we now, instead of just looking at Richmond in general, we're saying, okay, I'm flying from Richmond. Which is the worst city to fly to? And then some of you would have to Google this uh, just to make sure that you can figure out which locations we're looking at. But if I look down here, it's Monday, and if I'm flying to, expand this out a little bit, if it's Monday and I'm flying out, it looks like the worst place to fly to, on average, is Miami, okay? Uh, uh, arrivals, uh, so to arrive from is Miami. The worst place to fly to, again, looks like, again, Miami. So if you're going to or from Miami, from Richmond, bad idea uh, uh, to do that on a Monday. So now we can look and see which is the worst on a Tuesday, or uh, I mean, uh, that's Sunday. Uh, what if I go to day number two, which is Monday, and I look down through here, the worst place to go to, again, is Miami. So, uh, whoever this is, they can't seem to get Miami straight. Uh, but notice how we're drilling down into this. Uh, we're getting more and more information, but we're just adding one layer at a time to pull this additional information. Uh, out of here. So it looks like, again, Miami is really awful. Uh, so if you're flying from Richmond to Miami, not good times, not good times at all, or on the way back. Okay, so let's see if we can't add one other piece of information in here. So we've did the uh, destination, we've done the, uh, the flight numbers, but what about the carrier? So we have unique carrier here. So what if we put that in here? So not only do we get the destination, but we get the carrier. So unique uh, carrier. And my guess is that is, I'm gonna go to column attributes and see what the column name actually is. And it actually is unique carrier. Often if you see a label, it may not be the actual one that you're interested in. Uh, so I'm gonna put in here unique carrier, make sure I spelled it right. Okay, now I'm gonna make this three. And what I'm trying to show you here is this is a lot of data to deal with, but notice we are able to actually deal with this data. Uh, oh wait, I didn't roll it up. You should have stopped me. Oh wait, you're on the internet. You can't stop me. Uh, I actually need to do that down here as well. So uh, my aggregation has to, to be correct. So uh, if I looked in the log, it said it stopped because of errors. Um, so just keep that in mind. Uh, it stopped because of errors here. Uh, and I need a comma. Okay, so I need a comma there as well. Okay, so let's give this one a go and see what it looks like. Okay, so here's Rick 3. Um, here's the carriers. Oh my gosh. It says unique carriers. Oh man. Uh, so day of the week, we said Miami was horrible. Uh, who's the MQ carrier? Uh, so you can look these up because, you know, I'm looking at these. I'm like, wow, I don't recognize any of these characters, uh, carriers other than DL, which is probably uh, uh, Delta, uh, but B6, FL, XE. You should look these up. This is quite interesting to find out who these carriers actually are. But you can see it's not a hub, so it's probably not. Um, wait, here's one, United Airlines, UA. I recognize that one. Uh, it's not a hub, so you don't expect to see a lot of large planes flying in and out of uh, Richmond. Okay, so this video has run a little bit long, but hopefully you're seeing how you can aggregate things up and start digging into really big data uh, using SQL uh, because it gives you the facility to handle these big tables. Uh, I would recommend you just take this data that you've downloaded. Uh, I think it's like, it's a huge file. It might be. Uh, you know, several uh, hundred megabytes uh, when you download it. So, so just be aware of that. And when you put it into SAS, I think it goes out over a gig. So it's really big data to play with. And we will see next time how to actually start joining data together and making something useful out of it.
All right, so uh, this has been the SAS tutorial on working with large data sets in SQL. Now you can move on to the next video.